Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Michael and All Angels here in Dalton. Now, I know that Christine and I spread much light and joy in our ministry here, but today, the light that will be shining in our church isn't from us more long in the tooth priest, shall I say, but from our beautiful, shiny new deacon, Christopher. So we welcome Chris this morning. Um, it's this church that he begins his ministry as a deacon, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a few moments. But we meet today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Now, we wouldn't be the Church of England if we didn't have a little legal bit to do now. So um, Chris has to make what we call the Declaration of Assent. Uh, he's made this declaration in the presence of the bishop uh, at his ordination yesterday, but he now has to do it in front of you, the people of God, representing all the people, um, the 42,000 people who live in the parish of Upholland and Dalton. So Chris, if I could ask you to come forward. You have to face everyone. I will. Now pin your ears back. The Church of England is part of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, worshipping the one true God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. It professes the faith uniquely revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, which faith the Church is called upon to proclaim afresh in every generation. Led by the Holy Spirit, it has borne witness to Christian truth in its historic formularies, the 39 Articles of Religion, the Book of Common Prayer, and the ordering of bishops, priests, and deacons. In the declaration you are about to make, Chris, you will affirm your loyalty to this inheritance of faith as your inspiration and guide under God in bringing the grace and truth of Christ to this generation and making him known to those in care. I, Christopher James Dunbar, do so affirm and accordingly declare my belief in the faith which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness. And in public prayer and administration of the sacraments, I will use only the forms of service which are authorised or allowed by Canon. So here is your new deacon. He'll be a deacon for a few months. No more than about six or seven months, I think. No, it's usually a year, but more than, no more than six or seven months. And then he'll go back to the cathedral um, in the uh, early summer and he'll be then ordained uh, as a priest. But let's, let's welcome him to our people. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. Let us also seek the way and the truth of God. Today's Gospel reminds us that during his earthly ministry, as well as today, Jesus challenging, challenges religious authorities, <coughs> political leaders, and all who call themselves Christians through his words and teachings encouraging all to follow his ways to make sure work, uh, make our world a more loving, justice-filled place. This reminds us that as disciples of Christ today, we are called to challenge those whose lives, words and deeds are not in accordance with Christ's teaching and ways. This is uncomfortable for those of us who like to stay hidden and prefer not to raise our voices and for those who prefer to ignore wrongdoing and bad behaviour around us. So as we come to worship God together, let us pray that the Lord will welcome us and strengthen us. Generous, hospitable God, who turns no one away, welcome each one of us now in this time of worship and gathering. 
and embrace us into the mystery of your presence and being. Jesus is the name at which every knee shall bend, on heaven and on earth and under the earth. Let us bow before him in prayer and presence. Lord, we have exalted ourselves, full of selfish ambition and conceit. Lord, have mercy. We have blamed others for our faults and not taken responsibility for our actions. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We have turned from God and followed our own paths. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We praise you, Lord God, because you love us and care for us. We praise you, Father, because Jesus lived and died for us all. We thank you because you love us and are interested in all that we are and all that we do, each one of us, even with our faults and failings. Thank you for sharing our lives and our living. Thank you for giving each one of us purpose and meaning. Thank you for your generosity and abundance. Thank you, God, for being ever present in our lives and pouring your grace and blessings upon us. Let us pray. Lord God, whose glory is around and within us, open our eyes to your wonders, that we may serve you with reverence and know your peace at our lives' end. And we ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The prophet tells the people that God's ways are righteous. They must take responsibility for their sins as individuals in the present time, rather than blaming previous generations. <coughs> A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life. Because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed, they shall surely live, they shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions. 
otherwise iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. This is the word of the Lord. And the to God. This hymn speaks of how Christ gave up his divine power and glory, humbling himself to walk among human beings. Yet he remains the one to whom every knee will bend. A reading from St Paul's letter to the Philippians. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing of the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. Even, on, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, the glory of God the Father, Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you and en enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If anyone loves me, they will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we shall come to them. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? They argued with one another. But if we say of human origin, we are <coughs> sorry, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. 
What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He, he answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. and He answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going for, into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Sit down, please. The second reading that we've heard today from St Paul's letter to the Philippians is in fact the reading that was chosen as the epistle for the ordination yesterday. And Bishop Paul preached powerfully uh, on this particular uh, part of the letter. Well, I'm not going to preach powerfully, but I'm going to do a little reflection with you perhaps about it. Bishop Paul started by telling us that the thing that he'll be remembered for as the Bishop of Liverpool is that he created two new archdeacons, four archdeacons in total. Didn't go particularly well in some of the parishes. And that when the new archdeacons came to be sworn into their office, he gave each one of them a towel and reflected on the title archdeacon. Chris is a deacon. An archdeacon were those historically who were called from the deacon's ministry to exercise an archdeacon's ministry which is to encourage, to enable, to discipline, were necessary to be teachers and encouragers and to be servants. And it was in that vein that Bishop Paul spoke about the role of an archdeacon and more importantly, the role of deacons. And in this particular passage, this beautiful passage, the words about Christ emptying himself and assuming the form of a servant or a slave is the words from a very ancient Christian hymn. And when we read and hear those words, we are saying the same words and we're listening to the same words that Christians who were literally in fear of their lives for being Christians would be saying as words of praise, of words of encouragement, words of empowerment to understand what it is that they're called to be. And being a servant of all is the first calling of every Christian. And in those beautiful words from that passage, in humility, regard others as better than yourselves. Now that's a struggle for most of us. A lot of us like to think we're quite right and we're quite nice people and usually we're right and everybody else is wrong. And I know that to be true, but you know, you all got to learn. Um, and it's a hard thing for us to grasp, to see others as better than ourselves, but that is the Christian way. And that this passage talks about a lifelong journey of trying to become more and more of the mind of Christ. And all of us get it wrong. Those quick words, that bit of gossip, that moaning and groaning and whatever it might be, we put those blocks in place and we become less than God wants us to be. And it's interesting that Paul goes on to say, let each of you look not on your own interests, but on the interests of others. And when you think about the sort of discussions that go on in some churches, I know it fortunately never happens in Dalton or Apolland or in Digmore, but in churches where they say, if you dare, move away from the Book of Common Prayer. I'll never come here again. If you dare remove a single pew, we'll have you in consistory court. 
I'll stop giving. I'll go somewhere else. And as for these modern hymns you want to bring in, we know which books Jesus likes, and they're the same as us. Don't you dare bring a guitar. We know that heavenly music is only on a pipe organ. We put blocks in place. One of the interesting initiatives that Bishop Hall is encouraging us to think about as churches is those blocks. And some of them are not of our making. They're the church in the past. But blocks and things we put in place are easy to put there because we are assured that we are right. They're very hard to move. I found myself in the last few weeks, and I certainly was saying last Sunday, that I've had the privilege of being in these three churches, in these two parishes, and boy, it's times it's tough and it still is as we seek the way to move forward. I find that I am a very different person, spiritually, theologically, and in my life with Christ, than I've ever been. And one of the things that I found at the encouragement of people like Bishop Paul is the ability to be able to say more and more, that is human nonsense, and this feels more like the gospel. Because Bishop Paul has an amazing way of releasing us all, releasing us into a living relationship and to be able to really say, Jesus, what is it that you are doing in my life? What have you been doing? And the more we're able to put the traditions and the ideologies and the things of the past that we cling on to and say they're not as helpful as having this living relationship And I find myself increasingly talking and using words like some of the ones I've used already in a completely new way. And they'd have been very alien to me five, six, ten years ago. You all know about the journey that I had in terms of my understanding of who could and should be ordained. And 20 years ago, Christine and I wouldn't have been stood doing this together. 15 years ago, I would be stood here with Christine doing this. And I thought that the barrier that I held on to was right because it was part of church history. That's what I clung on to. What I fail to see is that Christ does not say, put your anchor there and hold on to it forevermore. Because that same Jesus will be saying, I've gone, <laughs> I'm not there anymore. You never needed that anchor. All you need to know is that Christ loves every one of us so much that he was prepared to have nails hammered into his hands and feet. That is the depth of God's love for all his children. This week has been one of the hardest weeks in my priestly ministry. We're dealing with somebody who committed suicide, We're dealing, or have been dealing with, we will continue to support a family whose baby died unexpectedly. There's been about six or seven seven funerals this week, most of them really challenging. There's been a lady who's been ringing me pretty much every night for about three or four times every night. She sees that there is no point going on and at three o'clock and half past four and five o'clock in the morning when the phone rings again everything in me says I just need to sleep I don't want to speak I, I know who it is but it might be that conversation that just helps her through the next few hours I don't tell you all that to break my heart in front of you or anything like that it just as a reminder of where we as Christians are privileged to be. And when Bishop Paul talks about the real place of service is when we end up on the margins. When the folk of the churches across our country and across the world 
prepare food for people to eat. Leave churches open in the middle of the night so that people with, without homes can come and sleep in them. I spoke to somebody at St George's Wigan, a church that's doing that regularly, opening and being a place of shelter for the homeless. And one of the comments was, well, you smell the wee, but you soon get used to it. That's the right attitude. That sees that that building glorifies God when his children without a home have somewhere to lay their heads down. When Bishop Paul said he gave a towel to his archdeacons. In the same way, he was saying, that's what we as Christians should have. That's what our calling is to be, to kneel down and to wash the feet and to build up and support and love. And if I could speak again from my personal experience, if I can encourage you in one thing and one thing only, is to see where those real barriers are and to try and lay them aside. The minute we stop saying, I'm Catholic, I'm Anglican, I'm Baptist, I'm Methodist, I'm high, I'm low, I'm middle, I'm everything, I'm nothing. The minute we can simply say, I'm a Christian, and it's really hard to try and be Christ-like, but I'm working very hard at it. We together will perhaps be able to make the barriers move away and that's what then will make us a Christian community and a church that has got something to say. Not because we've got any answers, but because we've got love in our hearts. And all we want to do is to say to the people who we're called to witness amongst and to serve is, I know that the Lord Jesus Christ loves me and he loves you as well. And my job is just to help you to feel and know that love. And I'll do it physically, I'll do it through word, I'll do it through prayer, I'll do it in any way I can. I'll move my barriers away in order that you can put your hand into the hand of the Christ who saves and redeems us. And unfortunately, Chris, that's what you're called to do. We are all called to do. And by way of a last little thing to say to you, we put up these posh clothes every Sunday. They mean three things. The white is the, cloth, is the color of baptism. In baptism, we walk with Christ. That's why I wear this, Christine, and all of us who are privileged to share in the ministries of the church, the white says we are all baptized into the one Christ. This is the most important thing we wear, the stole. This is the only thing that sets us apart, nothing else. This is the towel, this represents the towel that Jesus wore on that night when he had his last meal with his friends and used to wash his disciples' feet. This tells you that bishops, priests and deacons are called to serve. That is our duty and that is our role. We serve by serving all God's people wherever they are. Chris wears his ears across his shoulder to say he's a deacon and in a few months' time, he'll be wearing it the same as Christian and I do. But it means the same, to serve God's people. This is a Roman overcoat. And it was a symbol of sacrifice. And it reminds us of the sacrificial nature of Christ's suffering on the cross. But that seems to me a bit too wordy and a bit too high church. When I go to school, I say to children, I'm a Christian, and you can see the white bits. So hopefully you see a bit of my Christianity in the things I say and do. The service I offer, I try to do quietly and before the person who receives and God, because only those, they're the only people who need to know. And so this is the way in which I cover what I try to do, because I don't need to parade it around, it simply is known by God. And hopefully if some of, more of us could have a ministry and a faith along those kind of lines, boy, what a church we would have where every human being just knew they would be welcomed, encouraged, served and loved, and simply put in the direction of Christ, who is the ultimate example of what it is to walk the way of God. Amen.
Bishop's bow sermon was really, really beautiful and very, very moving. But your sermon today, Paul, was amazing and moved my tears, so thank you. So let us pray. Loving Father, we give you thanks for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, for in him you have opened the gate of eternal light. Bless all who seek to proclaim the good news, all who preach the word and go out in mission. We pray for all who witness in their daily life and all who seek to serve you faithfully. We pray that you, you will bless all in our diocese who are working hard to share the love of Christ with more people. Holy God, hear, hear us, us and help us. us. We pray for all who have been ordained at this time, especially those who have recently been ordained deacon, among them Chris Dunbar, Nolan McGarrigal, I'm sorry, and Heather Goldsmith. Bless and guide those who are currently in training for ordination, among them Paul Givens, and those are testing their vocation and asking what you are calling them to do. Holy God, hear us and help us. Loving Father, we ask your blessing on all who have important decisions to make this week. We pray for all rulers and politicians, for scientists and research workers, for judges and all who strive to bring peace. We remember all who find it too hard to remain faithful and loyal and pray that they may give, be given new strength. Holy God, hear us and help us. Loving Father, we give thanks for our homes and our loved ones. We pray for all who have influenced our lives through the example and teaching. We remember our families where relationships are breaking down or life has become hard. We ask your blessing on those who have to make difficult decisions about their homes, their relationships, or their way of life. Holy God, hear us and help us. Loving Father, we remember all who are confused by the many choices in life and who find it hard to cope. We pray for those who have lost their freedom and all who suffer from tyranny. We ask your blessing on all who are ill. By the name, Lindsay Bradbury, Samantha Ray, Justin O'Neill, Sharon Killer, Kieran, Wendy Preston, and Joyce Carroll. Holy God, hear us and help us. Loving Father, we thank you that Jesus came down to lift us up into the fullness of your kingdom. We rejoice in the fellowship of your saints in glory. We remember before you all our friends and loved ones departed. Among those who have died recently, we pray for Margaret Grimshaw, baby Theo, Philip Ian Molyneux. We also pray for those whose anniversary falls at the time, especially for Joyce Ashell, Christian Thomas Willis, and Jacqueline, Jacqueline Leah. We commit our lives and all of your children to your unfailing love. Holy God, hear us and help us. Merciful Father, accept, accept this prayer for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord is the God of justice, who puts down the mighty and exalts the humble and meek. We pray that we and all Christians may receive the gift of peace from Christ, the Prince of Peace, and through the Holy Spirit, who is the power and presence of God around us. We ask that what, the what, through what we say and do, the world may be filled with God's righteousness, so that peace, justice and mercy may abound. 
To accomplish this, St. Paul says we should have the same mind as Jesus. So, Lord God, we ask you to help us to walk like Jesus, talk like Jesus, think like Jesus, live like Jesus, and love like Jesus, whatever the cost. Amen. And so, my brothers and sisters, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Just before we continue with the Eucharistic prayer, we do what Jesus asked us to do. We bring bread and wine to his table. Uh, Chris, as a deacon, normally stands here. Uh, the deacon's role is often to encourage people, so he'll join in a couple of times um, in the Eucharistic prayer and the rest of the service, just encouraging us to join in. This, of course, dates back to when people didn't have booklets and things like that. And you're going to see that Christine and I are going to be doing similar actions together. Uh, this is what we call concelebration. And Concelebration is where the um, College of Priests uh, celebrate together. Uh, there's a principal celebrant and the other priests or priests join in, reminding everyone that, of course, we stand um, before you as servants and representing uh, Jesus in the world and doing uh, what he told us to do. So um, it's my privilege to, to share that. And I think this is the first time in the parish, so another first for Dalton and for Apollon. So that, that's wonderful. And I hope that this is a reminder that as clergy, as, as priests and as deacons, it's, it's not a sort of personal thing, it's not a personal ministry, that we're sharing in the ministry of Christ to all his people. So I hope that really uh, is emphasised and shared amongst us all today. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord! As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the saviour of the world. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we, bri as we bring before you these gifts of your creation, May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in the presence of your divine majesty, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St Michael the Archangel, St Thomas the Martyr and all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Let us pray for the building of God's kingdom in each heart, community and nation through the service that we offer and the love that all God's people bring to others using the words that Jesus himself gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, heir of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father.
God's actions speak louder than words. The Gospel passage today warns us not to tam tamper with faith unless we are prepared to try and honestly live the things we speak and pray about. If we claim to be followers of Jesus, then we are expected to show it with actions, not pious words. Just because we say we are Christians does not entitle us to appreciation by God. Those who have no religious motivation are often more compassionate, forgiving and less judgmental. In, this, in his beautiful letter today, St Paul prays that the Christian community will be loving and filled with compassionate people determined to serve one another's needs. We are all called to make that prayer a reality in the loving ways we care for others. Actions speak louder than words because words do not cost anything. Actions demand that we give a part of ourselves, our time, energy and resources. So let us pray together. Almighty God, you have taught us through your Son that love is the fulfilling of the law. Grant that we may love you with our whole heart and our neighbours as ourselves. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So having made our communion, having received the word of life, seeing ourselves as those who are called to serve, to humble and to empty ourselves, that we may walk the Christ way, that we may bring the light, love and hope of Christ to all those who we meet, that we may be signs and symbols of his good news and his power breaking into our darkened world. Let us in humility surrender ourselves to be humble and obedient servants as we say to the Lord, I simply pray that you, Lord God, will help me show your love to those around me. Amen. Thank you again for joining us this morning. It's been uh, wonderful to be here and to be able to celebrate together. And you're only a one-day deacon once, so uh, you can only deacon the Eucharist for the first time once. And Chris, it's been a, a, a wonderful uh, privilege for us all to uh, be here at the start of your uh, diaconal ministry. And uh, perhaps what I should have also just uh, made clear in, in what I said uh, this morning is once a deacon always a deacon once you become a priest you remain uh, as a deacon as well so the work of service teaching and encouraging uh, god's faithful people is a lifelong uh, task so uh, it's uh, a wonderful privilege as i say for us all to be at the beginning of this journey uh, with chris there are uh, some apples uh, available um, they are in the car park there's cooking apples dessert apples crab apple jelly mint apple jelly uh, and any contribution to church funds will be very welcome so uh, thank you to ernie and madeline for for arranging and bringing those here thank you uh, just a, a few notices to bring to your attention um, next sunday we will be marking harvest festival we need to give thanks to god for his amazing creation and the abundance that it provides us with um, in these covid days it'll be a little toned down um, so we are asking you not to bring uh, any fresh uh, food into church please uh, no cut flowers and things like that i know we've got the odd display that that's okay but we won't be able to fill the church uh, as is normal um, here at dalton um, we because we're not supposed to have um, standing water and such in in church uh, so we are asking if you will though if you're able to bring any food that can go to the food bank and uh, to be used at open table so it should be um, preserved food uh, non-perishable food tin food and so on so if you can bring any of those we'll make sure that those who most need them will uh, receive them from us in due course 
If I can encourage you um, to let your family and friends know, um, the email has been quite busy this week, which is not a good week for the email to go down again. So since Thursday, I've not been online. So uh, I think I'm back on this morning. So uh, hopefully answering emails later on. But uh, there's been uh, quite a, a, a little bit of concern, of plenty of people ringing to say, do the new restrictions um, affect church in any way? It'd be great if you could just let um, uh, members and of the family and friends and anyone associated with church to say uh, that there are there have been some changes in, in church guidance but it doesn't affect sunday uh, and midweek uh, routine worship um it's it's weddings uh, mostly that have been affected by reduction of the numbers who can attend uh, so it is just worth reminding people that we are open uh, on sundays and uh, during the week as well um I've been trying to increase the number of uh, Eucharists uh, around uh, in the week and that's really to not only to ensure that we're offering prayers each day. If we as Christians aren't praying for our world then nobody is so uh, we need to get on and, and pray together for all who are journeying through this uh, difficult time and to help each other to move forward in strength and in hope. Uh, so there's an additional Eucharist uh, on a, a Friday morning at 10 o'clock at St Thomas the Martyr. That's a Celtic style and it seems to be uh, uh, encouraging a few people there um, we would dearly love to to have uh, a midweek service here uh, the kind of Wednesday evening just sort of um, sort of f f fitted out we uh, fitted out really and I'm, I, I think it was just dark and, and cold and things like that um, but if you want to have a natter with each other and, and you think there's a day that you'd like us to to put on a midweek service it can be any time it can be in the morning the afternoon or the evening it doesn't matter uh, and then maybe to encourage a few people to, to come and join that. Uh, uh, Christine and I would, would love to see that uh, developed and, and, and become very successful. It's nice if between our churches we then got a sense of uh, keeping the prayer cycle going. Um, so it would be lovely to, to try and move forward on that uh, if we can. Uh, you'll be delighted to know that uh, Denise Givens and Catherine Woods uh, did indeed brave the shave yesterday. Um, so they are completely shaven uh, after the uh, uh, coffee morning that took place at, S at Christ the Servant yesterday. Um, I'm absolutely staggered to hear this morning that uh, yesterday uh, they managed to raise £1,111, all of which will go to Macmillan. Um, and I know there are sponsor forms here that have been filled in and at St Thomas's, so we've got a little bit more to add. Um, it's not too late. If you do want to make a contribution uh, to that, that would be great. And if you did put your name on the sponsor form, if you can uh, perhaps... Alaric, is it all right if people... Let, if you let Alaric have any contributions you've got, and then we'll get that over to, um, uh, to Matt Millen in due course. But uh, thank you to both of them and to everyone uh, who's, who supported that. And what better cause can we be supporting at this time? Uh, those who are perhaps feeling a little bit... Um, well, more worried than, than, than normal in the sense that, uh, you know, obviously some treatments haven't been delivered quite as, as quickly or as uh, in the way that we would expect them to be for those uh, facing cancer journeys at this time. So um, that's great that we're able to make our part in, in helping the wonderful work uh, that Matt Millen do. I think that's everything from me. Anything else from anybody else? No? Well, thank you. Like, thanks, Linda. Um, Christmas cards on the side at the back of church. Is going to benefit the maintenance and the upkeep of the church. Thank so you. it's all for everybody's good. Thank you. That's that's great to remind us of that. So um, the Yeah, so the C word for the for the winter festival that's coming. I'm determined not to say it at this point of the year. Uh, but the, uh, our cards are on sale uh, at the back of church. So if you do want to go and uh, have a look at uh, your Christmas cards. There you go, I've said it. Uh, then um, then anything, any that you buy uh, will help uh, church funds here. Uh, that just, just remind me, um, we, have, we had the annual meeting um, last Sunday, and uh, as a result of that, we've, there is actually two, um, there are, there is two vacancies on the, on the PCC. Uh, Alaric and Ernie very uh, kindly said that they would serve as members of the Deanery Synod, if you're on the Deanery Synod, you're automatically on the PCC, um, but they also they were in the five names that came forward uh, for membership of the PCC. So there are uh, two vacancies for Dalton, 
and um, if anybody would like to, to uh, serve as a member of the PCC, it would be great to, to have that because uh, it then means we've got representation from across the churches. Oh, Mark and Janice, you stood, didn't you? Yes, yeah, sorry. So, you, yeah, I do apologise. You know, I'm getting carried away there. I came here today thinking, no, so, sorry. So we have actually got all, all five uh, places. Thank you. I'm t- sorry. I, I, I think by the end of that meeting, I was a bit sort of... Uh, uh, shattered so I've forgotten about that but yes yeah, so thank you Mark and John I said I apologize there so we've got full representation uh, what we would what we didn't manage to do um, is to elect a, ch- a church warden church wardens uh, from here and and that now leaves us uh, with the opportunity and I'm quoting Alaric here because Alaric's always very positive when I email him or we have an email conversation we're saying that this morning um, that it gives us an opportunity to kind of think what that means it would be good if we can have some representation uh, from here. Now, at the moment, I, I fully understand that Pafoka said it's not really for me to take on the role of church warden. So the four people who stood are the, four, are the church wardens for the entire parish. But that does enable us to allow two people to come forward and say, quite happy to be a, in an assistant church warden's role. Uh, we just got to get the church wardens to agree to that. And they've all four of them said, yeah, we'll have uh, some assistant church wardens uh, at Dalton if we can. So if you feel called to that, um, that role, uh, that would be great. Have a, have a chat with either myself, uh, with Christine, um, and with Mark, who's obviously fulfilled that role. And... What's important about the role, and I think what may have um, put some people off, is thinking it's hours and hours and hours, and it has been hours and hours and hours because you've been very fortunate that you've had people who've given uh, lots of time, and I think that's going back over a long, long period where the church wardens have taken on pretty much all the major roles. And now is an opportunity to to spread that workload across uh, the church, and, and that's actually what we need to do. One of the things, obviously, that happened with COVID is that pretty much every wedding uh, was, was cancelled. Um, we've got loads of weddings coming in next year. Not only people who've moved from this year to next year, but we've got a lot more weddings uh, booking, booking at the moment. And we are looking at a substantial increase in weddings across the three churches. And people are now beginning to ask about baptisms again. And that looks as if that's going to be on the increase. Um, now, I can't, and Christine and um, Chris and anybody else, we can't take any of those services alone. We have to have somebody here uh, to help because obviously if something happened, uh, you know, we need, if somebody needs assistance or, and just to generally offer welcome, um, we can't be here alone because obviously you're in the middle of a baptism and you know, a child's not very well or somebody needs a glass of water or something like that, you, we can't stop, so we're in an impossible uh, situation. That's why we can't be here doing those on our own. And what we don't want to be saying to people is we can't do baptisms at, at St. Michael's because we can't get people to, to help. Now, what we don't want is one person like we've had or two people like we've had who do them all because, you know, that's just to share the workload around. And if we had five or six people who said, well, I'll go and I'll do some baptisms and five or six will say, I'll do weddings, you'd be doing, you know, two or three in the year. It wouldn't be massive or... Uh, and it will be a great way of, of sharing uh, that ministry around. So if you can uh, help us with that, that would be uh, helpful and great. So again, if you speak to Alaric or Sally, if you're interested in helping in any of those ministries, um, we can uh, let you, you know. And it's probably a couple of hours for a wedding, um, about an hour and a quarter, I would say, for a baptism and similar for, for, a, for a funeral in terms of commitment of time on the day. And finally, I've just got some bands of marriage to read for you. Uh, I published the bands of marriage between Kevin William Felton and Amy Louise Neild, both of this parish and with a qualifying connection to be married at St. Paul's Skelmersdale. This is for the second time of asking if any of you know any reason in law why these persons may not be joined together in holy matrimony, you must declare it. There we go. Number two signed off. Shall we stand and ask God for his blessing? May God, who has highly exalted Jesus Christ, lift your hearts and raise your spirits, that you may live and love for all the good of the kingdom, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 
come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.